So, uh, remind me again. What are you supposed to be? Are you kidding me? Obviously, I'm the most fearsome creature known to man. Uh, a sea urchin? A hedgehog. Ah, <laughs> gotcha. Thanks for dressing up with us, by the way. It was real nice of you. <laughs> like a choice. Because somebody stole my look! <laughs> Did you have fun trick or treating tonight? I did. I got a lot of candy. You can have some of the blue raspberry ones. Spaghetti! Focal spoon! Why don't we end the night with some warm apple cider? That sounds great, bro. Oh! Can we do scary stories, please? Won't that be too scary for you, little nephew? Nah, I'm very brave. I have a good spooky story. Is it a true story, Dad? Perhaps. I'm sure it'll be much scarier if we don't know for sure, Pumpkin. Uncle Thistle, do you want to hear the story too? You can sit next to me and Papa. Nope, I'm good over here. This story's probably gonna be dumb anyways. Suit yourself, pal. I am ready for the story. Okay, I'm going to start. Yay! What kind of story is it? This is the story of someone who created something they really should not have. A long time ago, there was an old seamstress. She had a giant pair of scissors and strange magical powers no one understood. For whatever reason, she would not die naturally. So, she walked alongside time as she outlived the world around her. She grew very, very lonely. All she wanted was someone who could outlive the world with her, just like she could. A friend, just like her. Everyone she met wasn't quite correct for what she wanted in a friend and no one she met could live unnaturally as long as she could. So, she took her giant scissors and her strange magical powers, severed their bodies and their ties to their world, and used the pieces to stitch together the friend she always wanted. <laughs> okay, so she killed some people. That's not scary. That's some basic horror crap. Oh no, that's not the scary part. It's not. Nope. The scary part is that it worked. She made someone as real as something like it could hope to be. It could act, it could think, it could speak, and it could feel. And it felt so happy to be someone's friend. The seamstress, however, still wasn't satisfied. This new thing wasn't good enough. So she kept trying to make the friend she always wanted. She did not even bother to name it. It had nowhere to go. The seamstress was all it had in this world. So it stayed with her. At first, it tried so hard. It would help the seamstress. It would encourage her and support her. It would even help her hurt others. All it wanted was to be the seamstress's friend. It was all it was made to do. But the seamstress didn't want it. All she wanted was the friend she always imagined having. The one that never existed, and probably never would. And it became lonely. It began to feel pushed aside and unwanted. A deep hurt grew inside it. It wasn't fair. It didn't know why it was being treated so poorly. It didn't do anything wrong. It didn't ask to be made. It wasn't given the choice. 
Over time, it grew bitter and desperate and sadder and sadder. It hated what it was. It hated what she did. It hated how it felt. Neglected, forgotten, unwanted, and unloved. And from its immense and unending sorrow and pain, it named itself Afterthought. One day, Afterthought couldn't take it anymore and approached the seamstress. It told her of its pain. It begged her to listen. It begged her to try to understand. It begged her to see it, to stop hurting others, and to try to be content with it as her friend. But the seamstress was unmoved. She told it that its pain didn't matter. She told it that it wasn't real, and that she would not stop until she had what she wanted. She told it that no one has suffered like she has. Something inside of Afterthought snapped. She wouldn't acknowledge its suffering because she was too busy wallowing in her own. Afterthought grabbed her scissors before she could react. And in a moment of grief and rage and desperation, it killed her? Yes, very brutally. Damn! But she was finally gone. Afterthought felt a lot of things all at once. She was all it had in the world, and now she was gone. But now, she would never be able to hurt anyone else again. But Afterthought would soon find out that what it did would have unexpected consequences. Maybe it was because of the seamstress's magic, or because it was made of pieces of people who were already severed from their world. Or maybe it was because it had killed her with her own mysterious weapon. But when Afterthought went to approach someone for the first time, no one could understand it. Most people couldn't even see it, and the ones who could see it didn't know how to interact with it. They just stared, unsure of what to do or how to help. Afterthought couldn't communicate with them. It didn't know why, but it couldn't. It pleaded with their eyes thinking so hard and loud, begging silently for them to understand, to help it somehow. But nothing happened. Nothing worked. So it killed them and left. So what happened to Afterthought? Did they ever find help? Nope. I would absolutely help them if I could. That's the thing, though. You can't help it, because no one can. It will cut you down. A desperate rage keeps searching for forever, probably. Now that you know about it, you can't unlock it. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And it'll stand there, waiting, silently hoping that maybe you can be the one to somehow help. Until it gets tired of working, that is. But yeah, that's the end of the story. Man. Thank you for the story, Dad. It was very scary. It sure was a real creepy pasta. <laughs> Nice one, bro. <laughs> that was very funny, Uncle Patch. Haha, <laughs> okay, but seriously, I'm spooked out. Can we go inside? Sure, bro. Let's head inside. 